Um, how will you build trust with people of color in marginalized communities as our future mayor? That's a great question. Yeah. You know, I need your help. That's like Leslie's introduction of me. You know, I don't know everything. You know, as she pointed out, I'm not black. <laughs> um, um, I did live in Africa for eight years, right? Um, that still doesn't make me ever be able to walk a mile in anybody else's shoe. And I don't think it does. But I think what we, um, we have allies and, um, and champions across the board. And the thing I like about democracy and when we come together to make decisions, um, the point is to bring in as many people as you can, right? As, uh, uh, that's always the goal, right? So I'm standing by ready to be brought in and um, schooled and got to know, teach me what I don't know and um, build the community together, right? Okay. But, um, Lauren Leslie wants to say something. Oh, thank you. Okay. Hey, all right. Um, I just want to say those two last two questions were really important to me. So I thank this group for asking them as a black queer woman, um, having a place that is LGBT inclusive is extremely important. And it starts with a, a mayor who actually gives a shit about our issues. Excuse my language, you guys. I do have potty mouth sometimes, but it's really what it comes down to, right? It's like, do you care enough to ask the questions? Does this go beyond having a float in the pride march? Or are you making sure that our businesses succeed, that our schools are inclusive, right? That there's places for people's voices to be lifted up and matter. And that's what she's about. She's very humble about this, right? But it's the truth. I've seen it. I've seen it happen. And literally when like a little young trans person comes to her and says, this is how this is affecting me, she listens. And then she goes and gets it done. That's what matters, you know? Um, and then when it comes to people of color, you know, I think it's important to be humble and know what, and acknowledge what you don't know, you know? But then to be, but that not to like be a shutdown moment where then you're like, well, I don't know it. So it's too much for me. You guys take care of it. I'm out, you know? Um, and really to like roll your sleeves up and get in, in the muck to make real change. And that's what I know that Jenny will do. And so I just want to highlight that because she's really humble in this, in her approach. And I think for a, a lot of us, the conversations are uncomfortable. She doesn't care that they're uncomfortable. She wants to know what we can do, you know? And I think that action oriented nature of, of Jenny's is what we need in this time, in this moment. It's really not contemplative or esoteric anymore, right? Like, it's like, get it done, move the needle in the, you know, like, and that's what she's about. And so I just wanted to jump in and say that. And, and, and I think just my perspective as a queer black woman um, and speaking to a white woman about these issues, Jenny has really risen as someone who I respect and would be honored to follow her leadership in these areas. Thanks, Leslie. You know, I think, I don't know if I was one of the first ones you texted that night when we were talking about the police bill and you're like, gotta do the police bill. And I go, tell me more. And she goes, did you see what Cory Booker's doing? And she sent me a link and I was like, oh, oh yeah, let's do that, right? But here's what Leslie did, a little mutual admiration society. She started in the Senate, but she listened so hard to a wide range of people, but never wavered in her values or, or the end goal. And she got, Senator Cook, former sheriff of Wells County to vote yes on that bill. And when he took that vote, I was like, it's gonna pass. That is like a miracle. <laughs> and Leslie did that. And she didn't do it because she slammed it down and said, my way or the highway, we're in the majority and this is what's for lunch. She probably started that way and then said, okay, John Cook, you can say something too. <laughs> but. Leslie also has a sense of humor, right? So, I mean, even if she started, I don't think she started that way, but I'm, I'm just saying, um, people know Leslie has the goodwill and, and the smarts to um, listen without wavering. And um, yeah, I was honored when she's like, should we do this? I'm like, mm, yeah, mm -hmm. And I will also tell you one thing about Fort Collins. I met with the Fraternal Order of Police the other day and you know, I was a clear hard yes on the police bill. I'm like, hi. <laughs> and I said, uh, 
how much has the police bill impacted you guys? And they go, no, we're good. I go, do you see that we need to tweak it at all or anything? No. And the head of the FOP goes, that was a really good bill, Jenny. We need it. We had it. We needed that. And I was like, can I say how much I like you guys? Now, is it, they go, are we perfect? No, no, they're not going to sit there and tell me they're perfect. Um, and I called our chief of police. I said, how much does this impact you? He goes, no, we don't train on choke call. Yeah, cut. no, yeah. So I said, has it hurt your recruiting in the Fort Collins Police Department? Because that was one of the big things. Oh, we'll never recruit again. And they go, oh yeah, no, we got plenty of great recruits. So Fort Collins Police was also one of the really early ones to hire a psychologist on board full-time. Jack Digliani was really ahead. And I've done some bills with them on their peer counseling programs that now have been replicated all over the country. Again, they're not perfect. They didn't even say they were. Um, but I think that we have a real opportunity uh, for partnership and not uh, antagonism in Fort Collins. And I'd like to see that continue and where there needs to be improvement. Um, I hope they're listening. Um, I so um, I think that's a, that, that, that was pretty cool. Yeah. And now I'm trying to help them get their DOLA funds extended because the Department of Local Affairs won't give them an extension on their marijuana enforcement division funds because they said, well, that's in statute. You have to spend it by June 30th. I was like, okay, I'll change the statute. So we're going to give them more time to wisely spend that money. Um, so I'm working on that. But Leslie's right. I mean, I need every single person doing it together. And I only mentioned that mayor makes $14,000 a year to signal how critical that people for Collins have said, this is not a strong mayor model. This is a community service model. And so it comes with a lot of responsibility for working together, all of us pitching in, right? Because I don't know what I don't know. So I'm going to, so you're in. 